Andre Vio, born 1746, Saint Laurent, Montreal, Quebec. He is one of 13 siblings. He married Cecile Aubrey, born 1753, in Saint Laurent, Quebec. She was seven years his junior. Together, they would have 13 children. Before Andre comes into this world, his sister, Mary Louise, was born in Mission Oka, Quebec, on an Algonquin reserve. Which makes you wonder if there is any native ancestry affecting this birthplace, or if Andre's father is perhaps working on native land at the time. It also makes you wonder if Andre was born on a reserve as well. It's 1755. Andre is nine years old. Over the next decade, approximately 10,000 Acadians will be deported after delegates refused to take an oath of allegiance to Britain. Acadians were the first French community in Canada and were allies of the Mi'kmaq nation, possessing a distinctive culture. Following the Acadian expulsion, thousands die of disease or starvation. 1757. His what but the old sister dies when he is eleven. 1763. His three but the old sister passes away. That same year, the province of Quebec was created by Great Britain after the Seven Years' War. During that war, English forces conquered French Canada. As part of the terms of the Treaty of Paris peace settlement, France gave up its claim to Canada and negotiated to keep the small but rich sugar island of Guadalupe instead by Britain's Royal Proclamation of 1763. Canada, formerly a part of New France, was renamed the Province of Quebec. It's 1765. Andre's three-year-old sister dies when he is 19. His nine-year-old brother Joseph dies on the same day. His new baby brother Joseph is born one year and three days later. Andre is 20 years old. It's 1769. His father passes away on December 5th. It's 1773. Andre marries Cecile Aubrey at 27 years old. Cecile is a source of Irish ancestry, including nobility of barons and sirs. But that's another story on another branch. Their first child, Andre, is born the next summer. In 1774, the British Parliament passed the Quebec Act that allowed Quebec to restore the use of French customary law in private matters alongside the English common law system and allowing the Catholic Church to collect tithes. The act also enlarged the boundaries of Quebec to include the Ohio country and part of the Illinois country from the Appalachian Mountains on the east, south to the Ohio River, west to the Mississippi, and north to the southern boundary of lands owned by the Hudson's Bay Company. It's 1775. His daughter, Mary Louise, is born six days after his second wedding anniversary. Three years later, Jean Baptiste is born and passes away on October 1st. In January 1779, Francois is born and dies by November on the same day as Andre Jr., who is only five. Our Andre, his namesake, is 33. Nearly a month later, his son, Luke is born. 1781. Francois Xavier is born and lives a long life. A year later, a daughter is born, Marguerite. 1785. His sister, Helen, dies at 43 in April. 
Saint Francois dies in Jude, just turning four months old. In December, his brother Jean Baptiste dies at 46. In February, two months later, his brother Jacques dies. Two months after that, his daughter Marguerite dies at four years old. Andre has just turned 40. His daughter Cecile is born in 1788, but passes away just eight months later in October. Mary Joseph is born in 1789, but passes away 15 months later. Another Marguerite is born in 1790 and passes away less than two months later. 1791, Hyacinth is born and dies less than a month later. Despite these severely unfortunate times, Andre's story continues. That same year, the Constitutional Act of 1791 divided the colony in two at the Ottawa River, so that the western part, Upper Canada, could be under the English legal system, with English speakers in the majority, while the eastern part was named Lower Canada. Three years after the divide of the country, an unnamed son is born and passes away the same day in January. 1795, Rosalie is born and dies less than two weeks later. Andre is 49. With so much unfortunate tragedy clouding his life thus far, it makes you wonder if the connections of the Acadians, the illness, and his sister's birth from the native reserve. Whether or not this ancestry connects to native ancestry or not, it's clear that being in this area may have brought some negative side effects. Who knows what his job would entail as the records of this are not discovered as of yet. Five years later, a new century arrives as Andre enters the 1800s. In 1812, a year and three days after his sister Mary Louise passes away, Andre is finally at rest in St. Benoit, Quebec at age 66. Perhaps reunited with the family that passed before.